All right, guys, today we're going to start Unit 4, Lesson 2. And last time we learned about what is a relation and how does a relation become a function. Um, today we're going to talk more specifically about equations as functions. All right, so functions, when it is a function, can also be represented by an equation or a rule. All equations will generate ordered pairs by taking input values that result in certain output values. The input value is our x value, and the output value will be our y value. If we're talking in context of a certain situation, usually science, um, our x value is called the independent variable. It kind of does what it wants. Our y value is called the dependent variable because it depends on what the x value is. Now our independent variables and dependent variables don't only exist in our science examples. They also exist in other examples as well. The graphs that we're going to look at in our class often will form either a line or a curve. The lines that we're going to form are going to have straight lines. It doesn't matter which way those lines are facing. So I'm giving lots of examples here. Okay, I've got a vertical line, a positive slope line, a negative slope line, and a zero slope line, which we're going to get into in a later lesson. Um, the curves that we're going to see at some point in our class are either going to look like this, which might be an exponential curve, or they might look like that, which would be a quadratic curve. And this is also another example of a quadratic curve. And we'll get to those later. But just know that equations as functions can look like all of these things. Linear functions, quadratic functions, and exponential functions. And those are our main topics of conversation in Math 1. For now, we're going to focus only on linear functions. And those are the functions right here that form straight lines. All right, so let's go look at a couple of examples. Our directions say to complete each function table. So let's talk about how we do that. All right, so right here we have our domain, our x values, and over here we have our range, our y values. Now we just learned that these are also called input or independent, and then our y values are the output or our dependent variables. All right, and let's see how these are gonna work together when we have a function. So I have the function y equals x plus seven. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that function right here in the table, y equals x plus seven. And I am just gonna focus on the x plus 7. And I'm going to put that in every line of my table. Notice that instead of putting an x, I'm putting a parenthesis. And that is because I am about to substitute my x value in for the x. So in this first line, I'll have negative 1 plus 7. The second one will be 0 plus 7, 2 plus 7, and then 4 plus 7. Now that I have input my x values into the function, I am now going to get an output, which will be the y value. And I just need to use my order of operations and my integer rules to simplify this. So I have negative 1 plus 7 and that equals six. So six is my output. Zero plus seven 
is 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. And 4 plus 7 will give me 11. So I have now the list of inputs that was given to me and the list of outputs on the left, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the right. And I'm going to take the inputs and the outputs and put them together as ordered pairs right here on the far right. So I've got my input for the first one, which was negative one, and my output for the first one, which was six. And I will write them as an ordered pair in parentheses with a comma between them. I want you to pause the video and try to fill in the other three ordered pairs for this function table. All right, so I have filled in the rest of my function table with my three ordered pairs that resulted from me inputting the x values and getting the y values as my output. I'd like for you to try to do example two on your own and see if you can't figure out what we just did together in example number one. Pause the video and try example number two. So I have taken my y equals x minus 13 and I have put it in the center of my table between my input and output values. And then I have replaced the x with parentheses all the way down and I put minus 13 behind it. My next step is going to be to start inputting my values into these parentheses. So I want you to go ahead and do that and then simplify. Now that you have your list of output values in green here, I want you to take your input and output values or your x and your y values and put them together as ordered pairs in this last column. All right, now that you've kind of seen how two examples work, I want you to do number three entirely on your own. So go ahead and pause the video, try it from start to finish, and then check back with the video and see how you did. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Some of you might have ended up with negative four for your first value. If you did that, you made a mistake with your integer rules. Remember, when we have one minus a negative five in the middle here, this minus negative becomes positive, all right? So be careful about that. Um, one minus negative five actually gave me six. And so these two negatives side by side in every one of these gave me a positive outcome or a positive output. All right, let's look at number four together. I have two X minus seven in this case. So I'm gonna fill that in and do two parentheses minus seven I'm gonna fill in my input value, which is zero. Two times zero is zero, and zero minus seven is negative seven. So note that I followed the order of operations. I did my multiplication before I did my subtraction. So I want you to go ahead and complete the rest of table number four, and let's see if you can remember your integer rules as well as your order of operations after you complete your substitution. All right, so I have completed my table. I inputted all of my x values and I got out negative three, positive three and nine for my output values. And then I went ahead and I put the blue and green together. So I put my output values next to my, I'm sorry, in my output values, next to my input values, and together they made ordered pairs, all right? Just remember that your output values go on the right because they're your y, and your un input values go on the left because those are your x values, all right? 
Let's go take a look at a more challenging example. I know that many of you find this one more challenging simply because it has a fraction in it. So 1 half x minus 9 is what I'm looking at. So let's do this one together. I'm still going to have 1 half instead of x. I'm going to put parentheses and then minus the 9. And then I'm going to input this 6. All right, so I inputted my negative 6. And I'm going to do the scratch work down here at the bottom. All right, so I've got 1 half times negative 6 minus 9. And that negative 6 is actually an integer. It's not a fraction. But to make it a fraction, I would put it over 1. Okay. So I'm going to do 1 times negative 6 and get negative 6. And then 2 times 1 and get 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Now I'm going to bring down the negative 9. Negative 3 minus 9 is going to give me a negative 12. And then, of course, I'm going to wrap these up together. Negative 6 next to negative 12. All right. Fractions can still be dealt with. We just have to take our time and show a little more work along the way. So if you need a sheet of scratch paper to help you fill in the rest of this, well, to simplify the rest of this table, please feel free to do that, all right? But all I really need to do to get it set up is the same thing that I did for all the others. Once I plug in my input values, then I need to just simplify, reduce the fraction, and then minus the 9. So go ahead. I want you to pause the video and practice with the fractions. Okay. I'm going to walk us through another fraction. I've got 1 half times negative 2. I'm going to put that over 1 to help make my job a little easier. And then I'll minus 9. So... 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Multiply my denominators now. 2 times 1 is 2. Reduce what is negative 2 over 2. It is negative 1. And then bring down the negative 9. And my result is negative 10. So my output is negative 10 and I have my ordered pair. Go ahead and continue practicing with the next problem. Okay, for my next problem, I have 1 half times 0, which anything times 0 is 0. 0 minus 9 is negative 9. My last example is 1 half times 14, and I'm going to put that over 1. 14 times 1 is 14. 2 times 1 is 2. What is 14 divided by 2? It is 7. Bring down the minus 9. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So those are my two output values for the last two problems. And now let's write our ordered pairs. And there we have them. My input value is next to my output value. And I wrapped it up in parentheses and put a comma between them. And that's my ordered pair. What I'd like for you to do now is to try... Um, well, let's do the first one together for number 6 because this fraction is a little bit more complicated. So what I have for this one is negative 4 thirds x plus 11. So what I'm going to do for this one is bring down my negative 4 thirds parenthesis and then the plus 11. 
and I'm going to need to input my 9, just like I did prior. All right, let's do some scratch work at the bottom. Negative 4 over 3 plus 11, and I'm going to input my 9. Now that is a whole number 9, so I'm going to put it over 1. And then I'm really going to simplify this fraction, um, the multiplication of these two fractions, the same way I did in example 5. 4 times 9 is 36. 3 times 1 is 3. And this is a negative that I'm bringing down. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And I'm bringing the negative with me. And now I'm going to add the 11 to it. Negative 12 plus 11 is negative 1. And that is my output value. That's a little bit more work because our fraction had a different uh, numerator. So we had a larger number in our numerator, which was 36. But it divided by 3 pretty well. So we will need to probably have a little bit more scratch work with these problems. But we can still do them just as easily in just the same way. We just need to remember our integer rules. So pause this video and it's very important that you try to do the next three examples and practice those integer rules, all right? And then check back in with me. Pause your video, try them out, and then come back. All right, so a lot of you probably really struggled with this negative three. Again, because we have a negative times a negative, so our answer is going to be positive. It doesn't matter what the number is, I know that it's going to be positive. Now I've got to focus on multiplying my numerator, which is 4 times 3, and I get a 12. Now let's multiply our denominators, and I get 3 times 1, which is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and my answer is positive, so I don't need to worry about carrying over the positive sign. Bring down the 11. 4 plus 11 is 15. So my output value is 15. All right, hopefully that helps. Try again with 3 and 6. All right, and so I have filled in the rest of my table. However, I did notice that I made a mistake in the very first problem. My input value should have been a negative nine. So I'm gonna redo this problem with a negative nine. Okay, negative nine times negative four will give me a positive 36. Positive 36 divided by 3 times 1 will give me a 12. 12 plus 11 should be 23. So I need to fix my output value to be 23, not negative 1. Sorry about that. I missed the negative just like I know some of you do sometimes. So mistakes do happen as long as we can recognize them and correct them, then we should be okay. So just always double check your work before you turn anything in or submit it, all right? So if you're still struggling, pause the video, go back through Either re-watch some of these examples or try them again on your own and see if you can find your mistakes. When you're ready to move on, let's go look at the next step, which is graphing our linear equations. And I could even say graphing our linear 
functions, which is what we were just doing, was taking functions and making input and output values out of them. And we're going to continue doing that, all right? So for this set of examples, our input values are still our x, our output values are still our y's, but notice that the inside of our table here, the middle part, is left out. Just because the middle of our table is left out of what we see does not mean that what we do is any different, okay? So I'm gonna show my work down here at the bottom just to show you. I still have y equals x plus six. So I'm gonna put x plus six and for my very first input value, I see that I have a negative 1. What is negative 1 plus 6? And the answer is 5. So my output value will be a 5. Let's do that again. For the second one, my input value is a 0. 0 plus 6 is 6. So my output value is six. I'm gonna fill in these tables the exact same way that I just filled in the other tables. So pause the video, see if you can mentally fill in the rest of your output values for this example number one under graphing. Now that you've been able to successfully fill in your table, what we need to do is to plot each of these ordered pairs Remember from what we learned in lesson number one that a set of ordered pairs can also be written in the format of a table where I will take this ordered pair out of a table and I will plot it on the coordinate plane. So starting at my origin, starting at the origin 0, 0, I will go negative 1 on the x-axis and down 5 on the y-axis and I'll plot that point. All right, I want you to practice doing that with the next three points in your table. Pause the video and plot each of the three points. All right, I unpaused because I'm not sure why I went negative 5. Mistakes happen, so let me just erase this, okay? What I should have done was gone negative one and then up five. I'm not sure why I went down one, two, three, four, five. And then my point should have been right here. So again, focus on your positives and your negatives, okay? Because mistakes happen with everybody, that's for certain. Okay, so for my next point, I would have zero. So go left or right zero and then go up six. And my point will be right here. For the next one, I would go over one, two to the right and up eight, which will be right there. And for the last point, I could go over four and up 10, but it would be up there, which is off of my graph. Um, and so sometimes points will fall off of your graph, but as long as when you estimate them, they still form a straight line, that is when you know that you've graphed it correctly because the word here is linear. A linear function should create a straight line. Why don't you pause the video and try example number two, where I have negative X as my function. So do your negative and then plug in your input values, which for this first one would be negative five. Negative one times negative five should give me a positive five. So go ahead and fill in the rest of your table. Pause the video while you do that. All right, so I have filled in my table of values now I'm ready to plot the points. I want you to go ahead, pause the video, and plot the points on your own. All 
right, I have plotted all four of my points and just note how they make this very clean, pretty straight line, even though I can't draw one. But the points made a nice, clean, straight line. All right. I want you all to pause this video and to try these four examples that you can see here on your own. You might need some scratch paper or to use the side margins of your notes to do any of the order of operations or simplifications, all right? But you should be able to fill in these tables and plot the points. Pause the video and start that now. All right, I've gone ahead and filled in all four of my function tables and plotted all of my points and I've done a pretty decent job of putting my points accurately. It's not going to be perfect when these graphs are so small nor when we don't have a straight edge to use so be patient with yourself um, but they should form a pretty decently straight line. All right. Let's look at this example together. Again, this is one with fractions, okay? So we have x divided by two plus seven. My input values are right here, and I'm gonna show my work down below. So my first input value is negative eight, negative six, negative two, and zero. I'm gonna go ahead and simplify these Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, plus 7 is 3. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, plus 7 is 4. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, plus 7 is 6. I'm sorry, whoops, plus 7 is 6. And then 0 divided by 2 is 0, plus 7 is 7. So I'm going to fill these into my output table, and then I'm going to go ahead and plot the points. Negative 8, up 3, 1, 2, 3, oops, that's a little off, that's a little better. Negative 6, up 4. Four. It's a little off, but that's okay. Negative 2 up 6, 2, 4, 6, and then 0 up 7. So it's relatively close, and I can draw a straight line through them, all right? I want you to do the same thing with number 8. Make your little scratch work off to the side. Negative 1 over 4 times your input plus 2 and then simplify it the way that I did. Please do not try to do it in your head. That's when we make mistakes, okay? Especially when we have negative times negative, and then it deals with fractions like this problem does, okay? Remember to multiply your numerators, multiply your denominators, reduce, and then add your two. Okay, so 2 plus 2 is 4. So try to do the rest of those on your own. Pause the video and then come back in just a minute. Alrighty, so you should have been able to plot all of your points and fill in your table. And I get, again, a decently straight line, except for my crooked hands who can't draw a straight line. Um, we should be feeling okay with this. If we're not, we do need to go back and focus on our integer rules because that's probably where we're going wrong. I feel like we have a decent understanding of taking an input value, plugging it into the equation, using our order of operations to simplify, and getting an output value. Um, it might just be the negative signs that we're struggling with or the fractions even, okay? So don't be afraid to show your work. That's going to be kind of my final note. 
show your work, just like I always stress to you in class. Um, on your exam or your quiz, I will still be asking you to turn in your paper where you show your work. The more that you show your work, the more successful that I know that you can be. Um, our homework assignment tonight should be a quizzes. Look for that in Google Classroom under the same post that you found this video. And good luck. Don't give up. Keep practicing those integer rules, all right?